Could I do my entire presentation in another language? Does anyone here speak Mandarin? Raise your hand. Ni hao ma. Wo gao su ni. Yi ke mi mi bu yao gao su bie xian. All right, I'll switch back to English. So, thank you for having me here. It's an honor. Yu Ping, Avery, the, the team at CASPA. I actually wrote a program about 25 years ago, but it's only for people. It's not M2M, it's H2H. So when I'm done speaking, I believe we're going to have a panel. And I want to test a three-line program, and I need everyone's help here at the end, if you want to do it. OK, you've heard about me. Let's, let's move on. So does anyone here have a cell phone? Raise your hand. It's OK, I don't need a microphone. I'm loud. OK, uh, is it a smartphone? OK. Um, do you have more than one app on your phone? Raise your hand. Uh-oh, turn it off. You're in trouble. <laughs> we just did a report on something called the flashlight app. Does anyone have one of these? The um, top 10 flashlight apps on Android will spy on you. They will eavesdrop on you. And just imagine that we've given our kids tablets. We have our smartphones. You guys who make the chips, you're making supercomputers that fit in our pockets. So I would ask uh, the kids who are about to get uh, awards tonight, if anyone here has seen Spider-Man, you know, what's the famous thing his uncle tells him? With great power comes great responsibility. And just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Um, so I'm not talking to Intel and AMD and Broadcom, but keep an eye on these slides. Uh, so we don't have privacy. How are we going to reclaim our privacy? What can we do? This is um, uh, Cassidy Wolf. We, we couldn't get the video playing, but this is Miss Teen USA 2013. She was a victim on her IoT devices, her Internet of Things, her smartphone, her tablet, her laptop. And a hacker for one year eavesdropped on her before she won the crown, as Miss Teen USA. A whole year of listening in on her microphone and eavesdropping on her webcam just like the flashlight apps could be doing on your phone right now. And you might not even know it. Why does a flashlight app need to geolocate you? Why does it need NFC and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi? I don't think it needs that. It's a flashlight. Why does it need the microphone? It doesn't. So data collection and data analysis we've heard is really good and empowering and it's going to be great for consumers. But with great power comes great responsibility. We have to be smart, intelligent, and caring in how we use these technologies to enable a better experience for consumers. Or you're going to have your teenage daughter as unhappy as she was. Uh, today, the numbers have gone up. Over 860 million, I think it's over 930 million records. Personally identifiable records. That's your credit card, that's your bank information, that's your name, your address, your social security. Lost, hacked, stolen. And you can go to privacyrights.org and see who the latest group of victims are, whether it was Home Depot or Macy's or Nordstrom we saw in the earlier slides. And I agree, I've never seen them all in the same mall together, by the way. Okay. What about your bedroom? Anyone here making chips for television sets? Is Samsung here? LG? Um, in, in 2013, in July, at the uh, Black Hat Conference, two German hackers, just to prove they could do it, hacked into an American living room and spied on them on their television set because the TV set came with Wi-Fi. The TV set had a uh, webcam, luckily not yet a microphone, but your TV set's going to have a microphone soon, too. So you can talk to it like your Xbox 360. So imagine, you know, you're sitting in your living room and hopefully you have some clothes on, but maybe you don't and it's late at night and you're in your underwear. I don't think I want to see those photos on the internet. Do you? So that's bad. Let's keep going. We've moved out of the bedroom. Uh, how about the living room? So one of my son's friends said, I was sitting in front of my Xbox 360 and it recognized my face and switched to my avatar and brought up my favorite game. <clears throat> creepy. Very creepy. That's what the kids think about this technology. Yes, it's empowering, but sometimes it's creepy. Very creepy. Uh, we're moving out to smart meters now. Uh, what if someone hacked into your smart meter 
and you check your bill and for some reason there's an extra zero in the bill for your electricity. That would be a, that would be a bad thing. Or what if they denial of service to your smart meter and maybe they shut off the electricity on you while you're gone on vacation? That would be a bad thing. These are the kinds of things that can happen when we take all these devices and we put them on the internet. When we put a Broadcom chip in and say, time for some Wi-Fi on this device. We have to be very smart about how we use these technologies to empower ourselves. This one is really scary. Um, I'm going to actually show you guys if we can do it. Avery set up the laptop. I turned off the GPS on my smartphone for a couple weeks just to see disable GPS. And I went into Google Maps and Google shows where I've been for the past couple weeks. And we have this live. Let's we'll see if we can show you. Okay, I logged in on my account. Whoops, it's not on the screen. I think, are you only projecting PowerPoint? Okay. Does anyone have an Android? Raise your hand. Okay, all right, you're in trouble. <laughs> and you can do this at home. You can go to Google or go to Bing and type in Google Location Services. Um, and yeah, we'll just try to project it. Uh, yeah. Duplicate, maybe duplicate. You'll probably be able to guess, uh, you'll probably be able to guess where I had my uh, lunch yesterday. So this is me at, at our office. I went to Washington, D.C. to be on Fox News with Brett Baer. So there's Washington. We could zoom in on that. You'll probably see where his office is. How did they geolocate me? with my GPS enabled. We've got lots of capabilities with our cellular towers. Google's gone around all the countries they can, and they've actually hacked into, and are being sued for this, by the way, getting the MAC address of all the wireless routers. If you know the MAC address, then you, then you can geolocate anyone without a GPS. Oh, you just drove by this wireless router and it's Xfinity and you tried to connect and we know the MAC address, so we know exactly where you are right now. Creepy. Very creepy. Let's see where we are today. I'll zoom out a little bit. So I had to go into San Francisco to ABC News. I think the story about our flashlights will be on San Francisco Channel 7 uh, on, on probably Monday or Tuesday. Uh, but let's, let's take a closer look. How are they doing this? This is for real. Okay, everywhere we stopped, every place we went on the map. I can keep zooming in, but I don't feel like it. So I'm closing, I'm closing that browser session. Creepy, very creepy. Okay, let's see if I can bring this back up. Okay, current slide is loading. So go try this at home if you have an Android. And um, let's go to our car. Now, there's a group called NHTSA. It's not the folks that grope you at the airport. It's the National Highway Transportation and Safety Administration, NHTSA. No, it doesn't stand for New Hampshire, but that's where our offices are at Snoople. And we say in New Hampshire, live free or die. We should add to that with privacy, but it's not possible today. It really isn't, unless we work together to reclaim our privacy. So starting with your new car, the black box will geolocate and track everywhere you go, and you're not allowed to disable this feature. I'm going to add the, i say it again, creepy, very creepy. Let's keep going. How about the restroom? Did, does anyone use a toilet that you stand in front of and it flushes itself automatically? Come on, raise your hand, be honest. <laughs> Someone has a patent on that camera eye to be able to be a camera and one day have Wi-Fi. Isn't that creepy? <laughs> I wish I were making this up. I really do. Um, so my conclusion on your digital privacy hat is that it has been flushed down the toilet. Okay, so let's get back to the smartphone. 
Um, the iPhone, by the way, has a kind of a hardened operating system and it's hard to hack it. However, if an app that asks for permissions such as GPS, Wi-Fi, um, let's see, GPS, Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G, uh, camera, wait a minute, that would be one of the 500 downloadable flashlight apps for the iPhone. Well, if it does all that, when it's running in the foreground, you can be spied on while you're using a flashlight. So even the hardened iPhone can have malware downloaded as a third-party app and you never know it because it's a flashlight. Does anyone read the privacy policy? Uh, the flashlight app, the number two flashlight app for the Android is called Brightest Flashlight. Brightest Flashlight, check to see if you have it, sir. Brightest Flashlight was sued by the FTC because over 50 million downloads of this flashlight app and it was doing all those things and the FTC said, you're a big flashlight app, why are you collecting all this data on people? It's kind of creepy. Would you at least, they didn't ask them to stop, they said, would you at least create a privacy policy that tells consumers what you're doing? So if you download Brightest Flashlight for your Android, the current version has a 25 page scrolling privacy policy which says, we geolocate you, we collect data, we read your phone's secret ID in the chip, uh, we collect where you've been, what you do, we look at your contacts, we look at your SMS, thank you very much, accept or don't run the flashlight. Does anyone read the 25 pages? I don't think so. So that's what's going on. So the smartphones, we are in trouble. And this tells you the story, we have it on, uh, you could Google um, Fox News Brett Bear flashlight, or you'll see it on ABC soon. Android, of course, is the most vulnerable of the smartphones. The Windows, the Blackberry, the Apple are pretty hardened. Windows won't let you run more than one process at a time. That's good, which is rare, because the Windows laptop, desktop 7 and 8 lets you run as much junk as you want. But their smartphone, they tried to copy Apple and halt processes in memory while you're in the foreground doing something. That doesn't mean the thing in the foreground isn't spying on you. That's the problem. So these phones are not really that secure. Has anyone heard about the NSA or whoever put up those 2G cell towers? Anyone heard about them? The honeypots? So there are cell towers across America now that force phones to drop down into 2G. Why would you do that? Because VoIP and encryption aren't going to work on 2G. So if somebody's having a secret conversation and somebody else wants to hear it, I've heard in China they're doing that too, that, that if they force you down to 2G, then you're going to have a normal conversation. It can be eavesdropped. So that's why there's these honeypots of cell towers that force you into 2G. Very creepy. What can I say? Um, so what about encryption? I heard about encryption earlier. Uh, so I encrypt everything I do. I've got a virtual, you know, a, a, what do we call that? Uh, I'm running a VMware on my phone. But I've got access in an app to the microphone, to the webcam, to the NFC, to the iBeacon, to the Bluetooth, to all these wonderful hardware I.O. ports that allow me to collect a lot of data on you and send it out over the internet in my secret little container box way above the security layer of the stack. It's creepy. It's very creepy. So you're not safe. Well, why don't I just go buy that black phone? That $700 black phone. Has anyone heard about the black phone? Anybody? Okay, so a company said, we're gonna go make this phone away from the US. We'll put it in Switzerland. And half of the developers are from the US, big mistake. They, <laughs> they go to Switzerland, they put the phone out on the market, they sell about a thousand phones. And then the phones disappear off the market for just a month or two. Why did they go off the market? Well, there's a new version that's come out. One for US only usage, and one for every country other than the US. They got a visit by multiple three-letter agencies. There's definitely back doors. Well, let me just say I'm guessing, but a high probability that there's a way into the black phone now. So that's kind of odd. So you really can't trust a proprietary hardened phone anywhere in the world if the US government says, I want to get involved and see what's going on on that phone. It's tough. And by the way, when you try to disappear off the grid, you get on the watch list, because they say, how come we can't find that person anymore? <laughs> okay, so can we reclaim our digital privacy? It's gonna be very hard, uh, it's very hard. Start locally, start with your family, start educating your kids. I actually have some flyers from 
Cassidy Wolf, Miss Teen USA. And uh, Cass Cassidy put together a list of her top 10 best practices, like put some tape on your webcam and your microphone when you're not using it. And this is Miss Teen USA. For, for the young award winners in the room, you also get an autograph. For, oh, it's not autographed, but you get a photo of her. So Cassidy is a privacy champion now, and she has her tips located online, teentips.snoopball.com. It just gives you some ideas on reclaiming your privacy. Is it possible? End-to-end -end encryption might help, but once you start doing that and you try to go off the grid, you're going to get detected because they can't see you but they could see you 10 minutes ago. And they know where you are because they got your GPS. So I also put up a, a countervailance course. The idea here is how do you counter surveillance? How do you try to get invisible? How do you disappear? Can't anyone in this room try to become a B2 bomber and just go off the radar? Very hard, but you can start to learn some ways to at least have a little more privacy in your life. Okay. Um, teen tips, snoopball.com, and uh, also there's a magazine that I started a few years ago, and it's free to read, and uh, there's some great writers all about security every month. Uh, you can go to register.cyberdefensemagazine.com. We just did a mobile issue and some IoT stuff, and there's some great writers. Prolific, I think they said. Um, okay. Baking security, I actually came up with some ideas for you guys. Uh, baking security into IoT. Uh, encryption on the chip is not enough, but it's useful. Rapid packet inspection. I mean, you can't firewall everything. At some point, the traffic flows. And there's something called covert exfiltration of data, port 80, port 443. I've seen people do SSH tunnels through ping and DNS queries. That means you're never going to be secure behind a firewall, so you have to be a little more intelligent about it. Um, identity management on the chip is a good start, but it's not enough. Biometrics is useful, but not enough. Geolocating people with their permission. So, you know, I got a call from my bank. Are you really doing transactions in California right now? Yes, I am. But, you know, okay, let me do the transactions. So that's okay that American Express called me because someone could have stole my credit card. So that's a good thing. But I gave them permission to keep an eye on my transactions. And they even said to me, give us an alert when you travel. That's fair. That's fair game, and it makes me more secure. And I'm OK with American Express slightly spying on me. OK. So I think that we heard a lot about everything but <clears throat> user and behavior. Who is the user? How are they behaving? And then you add location to that with their permission. You can start to add security at a much higher level. You can't make a secure chip and say the device is secure. Because the moment you do that, Intel tried that with the V-chip, it was hacked the next day. There's always applications running, and there's always internet tunnels. So the security has to be around the kernel and up at the user app layer to keep an eye on all of this. So that's just some thoughts for you today. Now, I'm at the end of my presentation, and I want to try an experiment. I wrote code about 25 years ago. I've never used this program. I need your help. This is for, to thank CASPA. This is to congratulate those kids who are getting their scholarships. And then this is to kind of bring in the next round for the panel. Here are the three lines of code. This is an H2H program, human to human. So line one is, don't start until you hear go. Line one of my program is to clap, but don't do it now. Line two of my program is, Clap in unison with everyone around you as loud and as fast as you can, picking up the pace. And line three is stop clapping whenever you feel like it. Does that, did everyone get it? One is clap, two is do it together as a team in unison to thank Casper for this event. As loud and as fast, together in unison, and line three of my code is stop when you feel like it. Ready? Go. Thank you. Xie xie, do jie. Sai jie. Thank you, Gary, and here's our token of